It is November 25th, 2021, and uh, I am doing this podcast. I basically uh, took most of the day today to uh, redo my studio and set my studio up and kind of hate doing it because, you know, just when I think I'm out of, uh, you know, the limelight and all that other stuff. Uh, and out of the the politics and just kind of giving everybody a break and just seeing what's going to happen, you know, um, you know, just stuff just keeps, keeps happening. That keeps pulling me back in. Now, last week on the 21st or the 20th, last Tuesday, uh, basically, um, if you guys were not watching in the city of Moreno Valley, once again, a coup d'etat basically took effect and anybody that has any damn common sense will tell you that you have to have a majority to do something in most city councils, you got to have a quorum okay two people is not a quorum uh but a quorum qual uh being at least four right so if you have a, a a city council of five or something more it has to be an odd number so even if you were going to attempt that, um, you should have at least three. They didn't even have that. You know what I mean? And what's really sad is, and I also covered a, a event that was happening in Edgemont, and Edgemont is, an, is a depressed area in the city of Moreno Valley, here where I live. And I'm considered in the Edgemont area, not the Edgemont proper, but I'm in the Edgemont area because before there was a city of Moreno Valley, uh, what would you call this area? It would be called Edgemont. So technically, I'm in the Edgemont zone. And, um, you know, there was a District 2 candidate that was running. Her name is Brown. And, you know, she's of the baby boomer age. And I, I tell you guys on the Demetra K show and all the other shows that I do that the problem that we're having is these baby boomers are running the country into the ground. And they can't really blame anybody else because they've been in power since the Clinton years, which is over 30, a 30 year period. And, you know, we were on Demetrius' uh, show and they were saying like, well, you know, these kids are going to be talking about you, you know, uh, 30 years from now. No, they won't because power has absolutely skipped over my generation because my parents' generation have stayed longer than they needed to. So nothing could ever be blamed in regards to policy and uh, the direction of the country on Generation Xers. Can't be blamed on us. We're not in power. And then anybody, like I'm I'm 51 years old. I'm not interested in power. So uh, basically, um, a coup attempt happened. And even though the city council was advised by the city attorney, the city clerk, and basically regular citizens there that what they're doing was wrong and it's a Brown Act violation, they went along with it anyway. And this goes back to what I was saying about District 2 candidate, um, this lady named Brown. She's lived in Moreno Valley for like 13 years. And I don't know why people always want to talk about how many years they've lived in the city, right? And I know I, I've heard and I've been told I look a lot younger than I actually am. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm supposed to be looking all broke down, gray haired, you know, like the baby boomer guys that look like, you know, they're, they might be 70, but they look like they're 90 because of all the drugs and stuff that, that they were doing and stuff and burning the candles at both ends and not even giving a damn. That's why you have a guy like Joe Biden who looks like he's casket ready, but he just won't seem to get in the damn casket. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I was told, uh, asked by Dr. McBean to come meet her and, you know, maybe give her some uh, uh, highlight, you know, to what was going on. So I meet the lady and I'm trying to talk to the lady and she's not listening to a word I'm saying. Well, we going to march. We going to do this. We going to protest. Okay. I said, ma'am, when she did let me speak, I mean, it was very rare because the lady was not listening. If you're in District 2 in the city of Marina Valley, do not vote for this lady. 
she she doesn't have a clue. She does not have a clue. If you saw the video on the IE Informer page on Facebook, um, I was taking video as a member of the press, and this lady wants to be a council member. I'm talking about Council Member Brown. Anybody will tell you if you're running for office, you want any kind of press you can get, especially if your opponents aren't there and you got the, the camera to yourself and you could kind of highlight yourself and make yourself look good. The first thing that that, that lady said was, first of all, you can't record me without my permission. You got to have my permission to record me. If this lady does not even know basic law, just basic law, and she wants to be a council member, she wants to be a council member, and she doesn't realize you do not have any expectation of privacy when you're in public, we're at a public meeting. And she's telling me, you guys can see the video, some of you guys have already seen the video. She's telling me, I need her permission to record her at a public meeting. Ignorant, just totally ignorant. And so I'm sitting there and I'm talking to her and I said, well, I'm recording you, so what are you gonna do? You need my permission. What sites are these going on? I can throw it anywhere I want. It's my picture, I'm in public, and I'm engaged in a constitutionally protected activity, freedom of the press. And I had a shirt on that said I was press. But this lady wants to be a council member she doesn't know the law. She doesn't know basic law. Ladies and gentlemen, if, just in case you guys don't know, if you are in public, and public means a public building, so if you're in a post office, you're in anything that is paid for by tax dollars and that has a lobby, you are in public and people can record you. And, what, you know, and what's really stupid is people that, that, that actually think that they uh, can't be recorded they don't say anything about Big Brother recording them. Cameras everywhere. They don't say anything about that. And then if you don't want to be recorded, don't draw attention to yourself. Maybe you won't be recorded. So anyway, um, a lot of people have been calling me and have been telling me, and, uh, and some of the people who were in the WLC wars have been you know, calling me, and I have a lot of respect for you guys that called me and apologized because for many years, a lot of people were thinking that I was uh, highlighting LaDonna Jimson and, and a Denise Fleming and people because I'm just mean. I'm just a mean person and I'm just calling them names and stuff. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. My mother always taught me. You can tell the character of a person by their actions. Simple as that. Everybody's got these pretty sounding words and they make it look good. Politicians do it all the time. What do they do? Oh, you vote for me. I'm going to do this. You vote for me. I'm going to do that. Right. And then they get in the office and then what do they do? Nothing. The Democratic Party, how they treat black people. Oh, we, you know, look, if y'all get us in here, we'll get that George Floyd bill. You know, we, we need to get it. You know, we need to get a majority. So vote for us and we're going to do everything for you. Didn't do a damn thing for black people. But that's another story. So uh, I appreciate you guys that uh, have the integrity and the, you know, it, it really wasn't needed, but I appreciate you guys and I thank you guys for uh, having the integrity and the, um, how would you say it, the, um, the honesty to admit when you're wrong. You know, I have a lot of respect for people that, that can do that. And, you know, and I do it myself. If, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I always say on this show, I could be wrong, I just doubt it, unfortunately. So anyway, um, LaDonna Jimson's, uh, and I want you guys to think about this, what had, what had happened. Um, two people and a year of a pandemic, and, and I'm just paraphrasing this, I mean, this isn't actually what happened, but um, I'm just, I want you guys just to get this in your head. On a night, that they are going to appoint without application, without notification, nothing on the agenda. LaDonna Jimson and her husband happen to be having date night in the parking lot of City Hall. They had no idea they were going to be appointed. You know, their name just came up out of the blue and they were going to be appointed. Now, the problem with that is, number one, it's a Brown Act violation, and it is evident to everybody 
that was there. I had just got done flying. I hadn't even taken my flight suit off. And uh, I got a call and somebody said, go look at the city council channel, the public access channel, and see what they're doing on a city hall. I couldn't believe it. Everybody knows I live right down the street from, from basically from city hall. I get in my car, I get there, I'm walking in pissed. And I'm met by four sheriff deputies that happen to know who I am. As we know, the city uh, monitors my page. We, we all know that because I'm a very loud voice. And when I started this platform, uh, I remember when people were laughing at me because I was doing it in my garage. I turned my garage into a studio and here I am again. And uh, everybody was laughing because nobody was watching my channel. But I kept speaking because, you know, two, three minutes is not enough time to say what you need to say at city council. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make my own platform and that way I can speak as long as I need to speak. And then I let this platform be used for other people who want to speak. So, um, and I remember everybody was laughing when I started, started my channel. And then all of a sudden, after a few years, people are like, okay, and now here we are um, where people are monitoring the channel. So uh, for those of you guys that are out there, that the, the key to making a successful channel is to be consistent. Be consistent because people are going to come to your channel and they, want, they expect you to be there. You know, if you're there every Tuesday, be there every Tuesday at that time. So that's the key to it. You have to be consistent. And, you know, and, I, and I went away from it. You know? The WLC wars were over. I invested for about four years of my life warning you guys what Highland Fairview was doing and what... Um, uh, they were doing, buying politicians and all this other stuff to get majorities. And now, as we see, and as I told you guys, warehouses are everywhere. In residential districts, nobody cares. Oh, also, uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, clear up the fact that do not misunderstand what I said about Victoria Baca. And I want to clear this up. When I said Victoria Baca represented her people, okay, I meant that in a positive, positive way, comparatively to black representation. Because when I talk about politics and especially, you know, I'm a, if you guys know, I'm a recovering Democrat. Okay. So, you know, it's one day at a time, 12 step program, just, you know, to stop voting Democrat. And I did. So, and I'll never go back because they don't do nothing for you. So, I, you know, uh, it's no secret. I will be voting for Trump in 2024 if he runs. And uh, I'm, I'm going to make the Democrats pay. As simple as that. So anyway, um, make no mistake about it. What, what I'm saying is she was unapologetic about representing the people that put her in the office. So let's just be clear. The majority of people who put Victoria Baca in office in District 1 are Hispanic. And that's what they're supposed to do. And she made sure she represented them first. Nothing wrong with that. Did she make statements that she didn't represent everybody? Yeah, she made those statements. However, when I said she represents her people, that's a plus. And that's something that, that um, people should be proud of. I mean, I've had a, I have a lot of problems with her policy-wise in regards to how she represented the district, especially myself being African-American. There was nothing uh, done in my opinion, in regards to uh, African American, that's my cat behind us here, and uh, he's in all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, I mean, but then again, there's not enough black people in the district in in, in proportion to other groups, so I can understand that. But uh, but don't be misled or misaligned. Uh, had a lot of respect for Victoria, like I've said before. And um, one of the reasons I am pissed is the fact that these ghouls, and LaDonna Jimson is a ghoul, could not even wait till this woman was laid to rest. Like her or hate her, I have a mutual respect for my enemies, okay? And Victoria Baca really wasn't my enemy in act of policy. Policy. We disagreed in policy. Okay. So Tuesday, these people attempted a coup 
And there's a new page out. I think it's called um, uh, Moval Alert or something like that. I, uh, you guys go to my page. I put some uh, forms up and they put some forms up of, of uh, things that they've have filed. I don't know who is behind that group. Um, don't care who's behind it. Um, and um, I, I uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I don't care who's, who's behind that group. So uh, a coup was attempted. Now, let me explain this to you guys. The city clerk and the city attorney told them outright that this is a Brown Act violation. Dave Marquez, who is a baby boomer, he heard it. He acknowledged and understood it. Still went ahead and broke the law anyway, or the ordinance or the rule anyway. LaDonna Jimson, the thief, the felon, this isn't hyper, hyper, hyperbole. She is a former bank robber, okay? And ask yourself, why is this woman willing to make all of this controversy? She called Victoria Baca a criminal and all that other stuff. I never called Victoria, Victoria Baca a, um, or did I call her a criminal? Maybe I did. Yeah, I think I did. I did call her a criminal. But I never made the accusations that the Democratic Club of Moreno Valley did and LaDonna Jimson. I know for a fact, I said, the fact of the matter is, and you can find it on, I think it's on uh, the city tape, where I said, you are under a federal investigation. They're, they're, that's factual. But do, did I have any crimes that I knew that she had done at the time? No, I did not. And she was exonerated in the act of the investigation. Uh, so, again... Well, Donna Jimson is there, happened to be in the parking lot, date night with the hubby. And she heard what the attorney said. So if somebody's telling you, if you rob this bank, you are violating the law. She still went and took the oath of office. Now, fast forward the next day, I went down to City Hall to, to do FOIA requests. And, you know, just fuck with the, uh, uh, the people down there by doing an audit, a basic audit of city employees. And, of course, it was a big fail. Um, a lot of employees do not want to be filmed in the course of their duties, even though the Supreme Court said uh, we can film police officers and anybody else that's taking tax dollars. We are the bosses. So if you are a city employee and you do not like being filmed, I don't like being filmed when I walk in a public building, but there's cameras. You don't like being filmed. You might need to get a private sec sector job. Okay. So, um, and the assistant city attorney comes down and uh, talks to me and asks me, could you know, just not, you know, hey, you know, could you just not film our employees? I don't intentionally go. I don't know anybody in, in city hall. You want to know why I don't know anybody in city hall? None of them, none of them, almost the majority of them don't live in the city of Moreno Valley. So I wouldn't know any of these people. So why would I want to re record them out of anything? But I will record and doing that. I said, look, you know, and I know there is no expectation of privacy in public. I pay for this building. I pay for the, their salaries. I pay for whatever. If they don't like it, tough. Go find another job. And I tell you guys this all the time when it comes to your tax dollars. You can't always keep relying on the same people to fight the same battles. I'm getting older. We need younger people and uh, other people to, to show up. But uh, which brings, brings me back to uh, Miss Brown, District 2. So she was in District 2. She's running in District 2. Ow! I'm going to, we going to protest. We going to do all this. Lady, you're 70 something years old. Who's going to protest with you? When protesting doesn't work. That might have worked 60 years ago when you were younger. I'm 50 years old. I ain't walking out there for nobody because it doesn't work. It's ineffective. We gonna protest. I've lived here 13 years. What has that got to do with anything? I've technically been in this town for over 40 years. Over 40 years. A resident of this town. What has that got to do with anything? So my point 
and I'm tying you guys into this. You have Miss Brown, who's a baby boomer, doesn't listen. You have Dave Marquez, a baby boomer that doesn't listen. You have LaDonna Jimson, a baby boomer. I think she's pre because she's a little older than the baby boomer sector. Um, doesn't listen. They t- you know, they're telling you what's right and what's wrong, but you guys don't want to listen. And then you guys are supposed to be teaching us and the younger generation. Look at your actions. Look at what you're doing. Nobody wants to hear Donovan's mouth, but here I am. Here I am. I didn't get back from the DR, the Dominican Republic, in a week. And all this is coming, you know, hand grenade right in my hand. And people say, well, you know, you don't have to get involved. Um, And especially you LaDonna Jimson supporters. Oh, well, you know, well, let's see what she's going to do. You know, we, he get, they're, they're trying to get rid of Highland Fairview. Two wrongs don't make a right. It don't make a right. If we do what they're doing, you're no different. You don't stand up for the rule of law. So, you know, the, the Constitution, throw it up, throw it out. It's just a free for all out here. And in America, if you don't have any money you don't have a chance. So just because they don't want to follow the rules, so we shouldn't follow them either? Is that how it works? Is that what you're showing us? One of the biggest problems in Moreno Valley is the Democratic Party of Moreno Valley. That was a, a, a uh, group that they all started together with. Even, um, I believe, don't quote me on this, uh, Victoria Baca was a member of that. And then that they had a falling out and they split off and Victoria formed her own group. Now, again, I am not a Victoria Baca supporter at all, but I do stand for what's right. And I do stand for the rule of law. The very next day, as I'm fucking with the city staff and doing an audit, I had no idea, and you go to my page, you will see the video, LaDonna Jimson shows up. I was at the city thing about 10 o'clock, maybe. LaDonna Jimson showed up there about 10, 15. Don't quote me on that, but that's roughly the time I was there. You know, the city, assistant city uh, attorney or uh, manager is telling me, you know, Donovan, could you do me a favor and not film with it? Hey, again, I will think about it. I'll think about it, but... I'm not going to let you infringe on my rights to do what I got to do, right? Audited the police department too as well, right? And, and, you know, rights are like muscles. If you don't exercise them, what happens to your muscles? They get smaller and, they, and then they disappear, right? Right. You got you know, you to you gotta keep these people on their toes. And that's what I do. So um, LaDonna shows up. Victoria Baca is being laid to rest that day. The city staff wanted, especially the people that she installed that need to be fired, by the way, um, were, wanted to go to the funeral, uh, and some of them were there. And I, from what I heard, some of them were told to come back. And Victoria uh, Baca's daughter, they had to call, I think, Elena to get permission to start moving the stuff. Now, Victoria Baca, lover or hater, she had died the week prior. And that's my light there. I'm sorry about that, guys. I got to change that light. It's a motion sensor light. Um, she had died the week prior. These ghouls could not even wait a whole nother week until this woman is laid to rest. And I thought that was so disrespectful. Uh, like her or not, again, look, Victoria Baca is a trailblazer. I mean, I can't take away what is. I can say a lot about her, but the stuff that is factual and the stuff that she's actually accomplished, I can't take that away from her. Was she arrested at a DUI stop? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But she was doing a protest. You know, you can spin it any way you want to spin it. I mean, there's plaques and projects, if you like the project or not, that she, her name is on. Uh, the solar building, where the building is, uh, the city's on that solar kick, whatever, she's a proponent of that. 
you know, you can't say everything that she did was bad. And I'm not going to say that. Again, that is why I pulled back and a lot of us pulled back after the wars had settled down because this WLC is never going to be built. Uh, we pulled back and we did everything we could. But I'm going to go on and have a life, which is what I've been doing. So now I am back. And I know the city manager, scumbag Mike Lee, he's watching this. His assistants are watching this and whatever. And I don't call these people names because I just you know, have nothing better to do. I'm calling them these names based on the actions that they do toward this city. Mike Lee doesn't live in this city, but these are the best jobs you can attract here. Warehouse jobs. So when the robots come, like we told you the guys that they're going to come, this is the perfect excuse to bring the uh, robots in. So where are these 20,000 jobs? But I'm not going to sit here and stand. I don't care who you are for what is wrong. If we do not curb this behavior, it will continue and continue. And who pays the price? You, the taxpayer. That's who pays the price. I'm tired of paying taxes. This new tax initiative that, that, that we're going to be voting on, I've already voted on it. No. Because if you watched city council, even Roy Blecker, long time, Roy's been here longer than I have. He's an original. He said it. We had a measure where they, they gave a hotel tax that was supposed to go to help the police and all this other stuff or this other tax that we had gotten. Where did that money go? Now you're putting another tax on us? You guys better wake up to what these people are doing. Out of all of these candidates that are running right now, not one has talked about expanding the districts. You don't, when a city is growing, you don't, you don't uh, restrict it. You expand it. Nobody's talking about that. But the reason why they don't want to expand the districts is they don't want recalls. One of the biggest problems in Moreno Valley is the Moreno Valley Democratic Club with Radine Ayers in the shadows, who was supposed to have retired, but we know she's a damn liar, um, running and calling the shots. What Dave Marquez did was a crime to the people of District 1. I'm a person of District 1. It's not going to stand. And I believe, personally, I believe there has been a conspiracy, a conspiracy by a cabal of members, majority members of the Democratic Party of Moreno Valley to seize power. And then what? You've taken over power. You've uh, gotten rid of Edo appointees and all this other stuff. Then what? Then what's the plan? What's your policy? But if we let you do what you're doing, then the next time it happens, we're just supposed to let it happen. So we're living in a, a, a banana republic now, a mini banana republic. Anything goes. Right? Two wrongs don't make a right. Very disappointed in Dave Marquez being a veteran. You know, I don't speak on other districts anymore. Like I told you guys, I realize that I'm doing and, and carrying your water and you're not giving a shit about Edgemont or District 1. So I don't talk about the other district. I don't care about the other districts. You guys fight your battle. I'll fight my battle here in District 1 by myself. You know, it's kind of funny when you show up at city, city council and everybody knows who, who you are. I had never met the assistant uh, a city manager before. I've seen him, but I've never met him. And he knew exactly who I was as I'm sitting there. The DA calls me before I even call him. And he says, hey, we already know. You don't have to worry about anything. And if you guys saw, I posted uh, where I put my uh, file in of a complaint the very next day. But where are you guys at? Where are the rest of the citizens? What are you guys going to do when I'm gone? What are you guys going to do? What are you guys going to do when Jerry Mercado is gone? What are you guys going to do? What are you guys going to do with the, when these people have moved on or whatever is happening? When are you guys going to stand with us and stand up for what's right? Stand up for what you believe. I said two months ago, 
two months ago that certain people should not be appointed to this seat. They didn't even, even take applications. It wasn't even, even on the agenda, which is a violation, even if you wanted to move on it. If you do not have a quorum, that clerk should have canceled the meeting. Number one, where are the fail-safe procedures that are supposed to work in situations like this? But this is what happens when you have people who don't want to do their jobs. They're worried about a paycheck. What kind of bizarro world are we living in? You're the city clerk. You are the first gatekeeper of what you're supposed to do. There's not enough city council members. There's no quorum. You cancel the meeting. And then if you don't cancel the meeting, you do not let people bully you into doing your job incorrectly. You just don't do it. What's the point of having a city attorney and a city clerk that tells the council members what they need to do and they're gonna do what they wanna do anyway and you're not gonna stop them? What's the point of that? Now we're gonna be in litigation. Thousands of dollars in litigation. This is where our tax dollars are going, people. I've been telling you this game for a long time now. What is the point of paying this woman a six-figure salary and she can't even do the basic tenets of her job, which would have prevented a Brown Act violation? Prevented it. Nope, she's worried about her job. Those that don't know history are bound to repeat it. Isn't that what the Nazis said? I was just following orders. Is that good enough? Six million people are murdered. Jews are murdered. What, over 50 million people are dead around the globe because people could have stopped it before it even got to that level. Is that where we're at now? Then you have veterans like Dave Marquez who just take the Constitution and wipe their asses with it. We know what Kid Cabrera says. This is all political theater for him because he thinks he's going to be mayor. That's not going to happen. Idiot Mayor Gutierrez, he's on his way out. Thank God. He thinks he's going to be a supervisor. Don't think so. You're, you're done. but nobody wants to hear Donovan's mouth. But the minute the shit hits the fan, Donovan, where's Donovan? Where's Donovan? What does Donovan got to say? I said two months ago, certain people should not be appointed. One of them was myself, because I'm very divisive. Two, Denise Fleming. Denise Fleming doesn't even live in the city anymore, thank God. But she loved the city. I've been here 25 years, and I love this city. If you love the city, then, you know, you know, it's amazing how all these people love the city, but then they leave when, when times get hard. But I'm still here. I'm still here. And I said, LaDonna Jimson. Do you guys realize in the last 10, 10 something years, that seat has either been Victoria Baca or LaDonna Jimson? When are we going to get young, uh, new, new blood and people that can think and listen and have some respect? When are we going to get some younger blood in there? When are we going to do that? But here I am saying, no, no, I don't want the job. I don't need the job. I ran twice. I did the best that I can do. And I think I am a better servant being a watchdog. And I serve you better by giving you the information. I don't need to be sitting uh, up on a dais and getting collecting benefits and, and a salary. I don't need all that. I'm not into it for that. But ask yourself, why is LaDonna willing to break the law and the rules to sit on that seat. And the woman wasn't, Victoria wasn't even laid to rest. And LaDonna is cleaning out her office. How disrespectful. Like my mom said, you want to know the character of a person? Look at their actions. I told you guys about LaDonna Jimson. I told you guys about Denise Fleming. 
I'm still here. I'm still here. What are the acceptable people? I told you guys. Daryl Terrell, he's been here a long time. He would be an excellent person to sit in that seat until an election is done. Jerry Mercado, I think he would be an excellent choice. <clears throat> you have some younger, dynamic people that can sit in that seat other than these divisive people. But you guys didn't want to take that route because LaDonna and Dave are in the same uh, uh, clubs. Which is a conflict of interest. Very sad, you guys. Very sad times. This country is going to a pot because of the baby boomers. Just look at it. You can't blame any other generation. The baby boomers are running this country into the ground while they rob us deaf, dumb, and blind. It's happening at the federal level. It's happening at the state level. It's also happening at the local level. And you, we, you guys keep thinking that, oh my God, $9 an hour warehouse jobs is enough to sustain a lifestyle that, that you don't have a life. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I live in a predominantly now Hispanic neighborhood. I'm the, basically one of the last Negros, blacks, standing in the neighborhood. And I don't have a problem with that. I just stand up for what's right. And I do the best to keep my community involved and upgraded. Like the rest of the city. Thank God, as much as I complain about warehousing, and again, I'm not against warehousing, I'm against from where it was at. But... I look at the east side of the city and see where they're putting these warehouses and in the different areas and stuff. And I'm like, damn, here we are in Edgemont and nothing's changed here. Yeah, I've upgraded some things and got some things done uh, from where I was at, but it isn't about me. But I'm just saying it just doesn't make sense because according to the original master plan of the city, the warehouses were supposed to be on this side of the city. I just don't understand how nobody can see putting warehouses all over your city doesn't make sense. Edo doesn't control uh, individual trucking companies. That, does, that didn't make any sense either. You got these young truckers that don't give a shit, tearing up your roads and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, you guys, um, I'm Donovan Sadiq. I am back. And even if I do a little traveling, thanks to technology, I could rant and rave from overseas. Why don't you guys also remember the animal shelter. If you got an animal, or if you find an animal, I found an animal the other day and I called in a couple of uh, cats and dogs. Uh, you can use your city app. There's a city app. Go to your Google Play, Station, uh, Play Store and your um, Apple Play and uh, you can report stuff anonymously. You don't, if you don't want to get involved, you can report it anonymously. And that's what I do when I walk around my neighborhood. I use the city app. Just look up Moreno Valley City app. It'll pop up, put it in there. It does your location. It, it does everything for you. So you don't even have to, you know, you just send it in, pop, 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 especially if it's graffiti. Graffiti is usually taken care of within 24 hours. It's a great app. Um, just because you live in the city of Moreno Valley and you live in a depressed area, uh, there's no excuse for trash to be on the ground. There's no excuse for graffiti to be there. You just walk around and you know not say anything. Be active in your community. This was a great city at one time. Until all you LA people came out here. Then it just went to pot. You know? And I'm not saying that to be like vicious or mean. That's just human nature. I don't understand how you move out of LA to get away from LA, or if you were gentrified out of LA, then you want to turn a new place into LA, which it, it could never be. But that's how some people think, you know? So, um, it's just crazy. But hey, you guys, uh, check me out on uh, Free Flow Fridays with Demetra K at one o'clock. I'm on Facebook when, when we do that. And we also have Don't Believe the Hype on Wednesdays. Now you guys remember the show Don't Believe the Hype. That was the very show I started when I started my broadcasting career with Demetra K, and we would talk about all kinds of uh, topics. Also, 
check out my homie, Demetra K. She's still out there doing it. She's doing it with the African Diaspora uh, News Network. And she's also doing it with her show. And we still do her show on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you guys so desire, you want to support the media and what we're doing, you know, I have a cash app and all that other good stuff. Just please uh, do that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email me, uh, message me. I usually get back to a whole bunch of stuff. But make no mistake about what is going on. I'm on nobody's side, okay? I'm neither a Democrat, I'm neither a Republican. Republicans have good ideas, Democrats have good ideas. But instead of putting these D or an R on your name, how about putting an A by your name? You're an American first. How about that? Let's be Americans first. And if we have a, a disagreement, then let's just not forget we're Americans first. We can disagree and, and do it civilly. Doesn't matter if you're Hispanic, if you're black, if you're Asian, you're supposed to be an American first. Stop with this team mentality of, oh, my team, your team, whatever. We're all supposed to be on the same team at the end of the day. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, people have asked me, well, with this violation, is she going to go to jail? Is she going to do No, no, it doesn't work that way. We have to pay for the court case and her salary and all that other stuff. The worst that could probably happen is a fine, right? Guess who pays that? The taxpayer. So this woman, this criminal, felon, bank robber, we're going to have to pay for her stupid mistake. And she willingly did it. And she can't sit there and say, I didn't know. She knew. They told her. Dave Marquez needs to be recalled. Kid Cabreras needs to be recalled. And since you two took my voice away from me in my district, I'm going to tell your people in your district what they need to do. Oh, it's not over. Dave, LaDonna, Kid Kerberos, I'm not finished with you yet. I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. I'm not done. Get ready for more, and I'm going to pile it on as much as I can. If you're uh, Mike Lee, scumbag Mike Lee, city manager, and all the scumbags in City Hall, I'm back. And I know you're watching this. I want you to say, I'm just going to say this. This is not personal, okay? I've got to use certain terms, shock value, to get people to listen and learn. If you're not a scumbag, start bringing some good jobs to the city of Moreno Valley and, and uh, jobs that we deserve here, other than services jobs. We're not slaves. I know how logistics works, where there's a high Hispanic population, high Hispanic, black, poor population. That's where the logistics sets up shop. Bring us some good jobs, because we have people here, we got young people here that deserve better jobs. And I've been saying that since I was seven years old living here. I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. I'm not finished with these scumbags yet.